This morning, we are going to continue our series on the tracks that we have in the back. Now, since we've changed our, the format of our Thursday evening meetings, it's not really conducive to record that meeting or do verse by verse on that evening. So starting next week, we're going to go back to our old way, which is one week verse by verse here on Sunday mornings, and then another week of something else. Um, so for those of you who can't make the Thursday evening meetings and miss verse by verse, you'll get some more of that. And again, these tracks are not produced by us, but we use them. They're produced by the folks at Grace Ambassadors out in Swayze, Indiana. And one of the things we talked about at our Thursday meeting this week is the fact that you know we all know what happened in Las Vegas last weekend. And we all talked about how none of us could remember hearing anything said by Christian spokespeople about Las Vegas, whether it be online or on TV. You know, we, hadn't, we hadn't seen things that happened. And of course, what an awful event. And it shows you how fast your life could be over. 22,000 people go to a concert then bullets start flying through people in the middle. Who expects to have automatic gunfire, well, close to automatic gunfire, coming down on you from the sky at a concert? It just shows you what a vapor your life is and what an awful, awful bad thing that happened. Now, to be fair, 22,000 people went to that. 21,000 people, 21,500 people got out safely without injury. So we can be grateful for that. But 500 people either injured or killed. That's a bad thing. The tract I've chosen to do this week, why do bad things happen? Why do bad things happen? Anybody ever been asked that before? As a Christian, why do bad things happen? And we talked at one of the, another at the Thursday meeting, we talked about, you know, Bible-believing Christians should see events like what happened in Las Vegas and have a lot to say and have a lot of helpful, relevant information to offer people. We should. I mean, we're the ones who claim to be God's ambassadors. We have God's Word. We can tell you what God thinks about X, Y, or Z. We should have a lot of good information to offer people when bad things happen. How do we do this week? Now, I know there's a lot of conspiracy theories floating around about this like there is everything else, but we're just going to deal with this on the face of the facts that we know at the time. A crazy person, actually not crazy, a cold-blooded calculated killer purported an awful act to, to the point, did anybody hear what they found on, on the note in his room? Geometry. They said there wasn't a suicide note, they said it was numbers. He was calculating how far his bullet would drop shooting from that elevation to the distance he was shooting at to make sure he was aiming high enough to when the bullet dropped, it would hit his targets. That's not crazy. That's calculated. That's evil. More on that in a minute. So when bad things happen, who's the first Christian to stand up and say, hello, lost and dying world. I can tell you what God thinks about this. Why did this happen? Enter the fossil. They should have put him out to pasture 20 years ago, 30 years ago. Pat Robertson. Pat Robertson. Anybody a big fan of his show in here? Let me read what he said about this now. Does everybody remember when Pat Robertson ran for president? Yeah. Glad that didn't happen. 
Why did this bad thing happen? Pat Robertson, spokesman for God. Anybody have a guess on why it happened? According to old Pat. How about you're not showing President Trump enough respect? It's not shocking to me. I've been watching this guy's clips for years. It's just how, what flavor of nut are we going to get out of this nut when he speaks? He said, ladies and gentlemen, and I'm quoting, I'm trying to make sense of this. I'm sure you are. Violence in the streets. Why is it happening? Hey, that's our question. Why do bad things happen? Robertson asked on the 700 Club while responding to the massacre. He said, you know, what I'd like to give you, this is his answer on why bad things happen. What I'd like to give you is the fact that we have disrespect for authority. Okay, I guess there's no more disrespect for authority now than at any time in history. There is profound disrespect of our president all across this nation. All right, so madman fired, madman, cold calculated killer fires on people because people disrespect Trump. They say terrible things about him. You know, people say terrible things about every single person who holds the office of the president. Suddenly, half the people hate the president, half the people love him in the country. There's disrespect now for our national anthem, disrespect for our veterans, disrespect for the institutions of government, disrespect for the court system, all the way up and down the line, disrespect. That's Pat Robertson's offering to a lost and dying world. So NFL players taking a knee during the National Anthem. That went into Las Vegas. He said, this disrespect has caused America to lose its controlling authority, coupled with the absence of biblical authority, has caused the people to run amok. What should I say, thou idiot? How about thou hypocrite? What has Pat Robertson done for eight years straight, when it wasn't his guy in charge. Anybody watch? I can tell you what he did. He disrespected the president. He said terrible things about him. He disrespected, uh, well, not the veterans, but he disrespected the institutions of our government. He disrespected the court system all the way up and down the line. Pat Robertson disrespected when the people with the D were in charge. What he... It, I can't even make sense of what he's saying. But that is, you know, the 700 Club. They're on TV. They've got all the money. They're worldwide. Why did this bad thing happen? Because you didn't respect Trump. That's what people take away from that. All right. Did anybody, this was mentioned at our Thursday meeting, did anybody hear the story about the agnostic who was in the crowd that was being fired at? So, let's have Pat Roberts, why he don't like Trump. This marker's done. Guy said he went to the concert and agnostic. Agnostic. Gnostic means a knower. When you put an A in front of something in the English language, it means don't. So don't know her is what an agnostic is. He doesn't know if there's a God. He doesn't know if there is, if there isn't. This man says he was in fight or flight mode as Stephen Paddock rained bullets down on a country music festival in Las Vegas. If, if it were over here, he's, he's telling the story to a reporter. He says, if it were over here and I took cover, well, there were still bodies on that side of people just laying in pools of blood. I still didn't know if it, that was safe or not. Um, he says, during the shooting, he had a change of heart. Now, let me say this. I don't think any of us in this room could imagine the horror of that situation. One mis minute, you're listening to bad music, having a great time. The next minute, 
I hate to be graphic, but people's heads are blowing open. People's bodies are being torn apart all around you. You don't know where the gunfire is coming from, but you know what you thought was fireworks is people dying. I can't imagine the horror, the shock, the situation that this person's in. I'm just dealing with the words on the page here. So he says, it's a fight or flight situation, obviously. He said, you can't really, you just got to take it to God at that point and hope you can make it. Okay. I don't know what that means. God, please let the bullet hit him instead of me. What, what does that even mean? Again, guy's probably in complete shock. But he says, I can't speak for everyone, but for me, I'm just, you know, I was agnostic going into that concert, and now I'm a firm believer in God because there's just no way that, you know, all that happened, and I made it, and I was blessed enough to still be alive here talking to you today. Where does somebody learn that kind of selfishness? In church! Ding, 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 ding! This guy used to go to church. But just think about that for a second. The fact, you know, he believes that God is there protecting his life, keeping him alive. And his thing is, that's awesome, God. You let those ten people get blown away, but you saved me. Now I believe in you. So what's, what's his response, Joe Agnostic? Why do bad things happen? Well, because God loves me. And obviously, doesn't care about others. I mean, if God loved everybody equally in that crowd, he would have saved everybody, right? Makes sense. What this guy's saying, and again, I'm not trying to beat up on this guy. Using his words as an illustration. God loves me, he doesn't care about others. That's why bad things happen. Anybody want to follow that God? Wonderful grace of Jesus to a few people. The other people, he'll let them get blown away. I believe in God now because I believe God saved me and he let the young girl next to me take a bullet through her brain. That's Joe Pewsitter. Okay, so we've gone through the fossil. We've got Joe agnostic. What about the heir of the Billy Graham empire, Franklin Graham? This is somebody that may have something decent to say, right? More conservative, more down the line. The Reverend Franklin Graham. Reverend appears one time in the Bible, the word. It's talking about God's name. Never, I tell people, whatever you call me. Call me Steve, call me hey you, call me dummy. Please don't ever call me Reverend. Anyways, the Reverend Franklin Graham has issued a warning to America following the deadly Las Vegas shooting that left 59 dead and over 500 wounded. Would have been nice if their warning happened before, right? In a Facebook post, Graham said that evil is a universal problem that affects each of our hearts. Hey, how are we doing so far? Why did that awful thing happen? Because there's evil and you're surrounded by evil people. So far, so good. Evil exists in the world today, and the Bible warns us that because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold. More on that in a moment. He's quoting a Bible verse. He went on to say that the kind of violence and evil on display in Las Vegas earlier this week is indicative of a generation that has turned its back on God. The more people move away from the Bible... Whether they're saved or not, the more you move away from Bible principles, you're going to have more evil, naturally. So, okay. Our nation is in trouble, and only God can heal the human heart. That's why Jesus Christ came to pay the penalty for our sins and offer forgiveness through faith in him. Hey, he got right next to the gospel there. 
He didn't say trust his payment for your sins, trust his blood. He said just believe in him, but okay. So not bad. Definitely better than Pat Robertson, right? He pointed to human wickedness, human evil. Here's the problem. The verse he quoted, anybody know where that verse was from? Matthew 24. Anybody know what Matthew 24 is about? Got that right. More specifically, Franklin Graham says, well, this happens because of evil. You're in the end of days. It's the apocalypse. Let not your heart be troubled. He puts you smack dab square in the middle of the tribulation. Why do bad things happen? Because you're in the apocalypse. That's what Franklin Graham said. And we can read more than one verse, sir. So, does that help? (laughs) That's Franklin Graham. Well, what about the great prophet, the great healer, the wonderful man of God, <coughs> excuse me, almost gag there. Benny Hinn, what did the prophet say? Did he say, I prophesied it last night, I don't know why all those people went to that concert? No, I guess he didn't, did he? The great prophet Benny Hinn, at 11.26 a.m., the day after the shooting, on his Facebook page, Put, you know how on Facebook you can put how you're feeling when you post something? (laughs) Feeling heartbroken. This is 11, hold on. 11.26 a.m. Heartbroken. Is that all God has to say about it? Prophet Benny? Feeling heartbroken, there are no words to describe this horrific attack in Las Vegas. Please stop whatever you're doing and begin praying for the victims and those affected by this unimaginable attack. No words. I can get that from my neighbor next door. You're a prophet of God. That's what we're looking for. Words from God. (coughs) Gag when I say that. No words. Heartbroken. That was 11.26 a.m. Hmm? Yeah, well, no. Don't, didn't you hear? They went to the hospital, and they, every, every carload of injured people that came in, they just healed them right there. Bullet wound be healed. And then, you know, that was the, the wounded people. Then they went back to the scene where all the bodies were laying on the ground, and they said, rise up and walk, every one of you, in the name of Jesus. And they all got up, and, and they're alive, alive today. You didn't hear that happen? Yeah. You watch the fake news, obviously. That all happened. Seriously, though, those people that claim that power, that are stealing people, stealing money from little old women, claim to have that power. Where were they? He's got a G5 jet you can get from wherever you're at in the world to Las Vegas pretty quick. (sighs) What do the kids say? Reality hits you hard, bro. When your doctrine fails, when your liars that you follow fail. Anyway. That was 11.26 a.m., feeling heartbroken. By 1.02 p.m., hour and a half later, perhaps he's got a word from the Lord now. He's got some words to say. What does he say at 1.02 p.m.? On today's program, Pastor Benny Hinn welcomes noted speaker, author, and evangelist Michael Smalley to This Is Your Day. That's the name of the program. Wasn't a great day for the people in Vegas, huh? This is your day to get shot. 1.02 p.m. So, hour and a half after he's feeling heartbroken, what is he doing? He's promoting the next day's speaker. They engage in an important discussion about four voices you must listen to in order to have a fulfilling, successful, and prosperous life. 
Wish you would have told the people in Vegas two days ago. They could have listened and had a successful and prosperous life. Now they're dead. It's time to cut through the noise of the world in order to recognize the voices that truly matter. Watch, expecting to receive revelation truth which will significantly impact your life. Unless you died the day before because the prophet didn't warn you. At the end of the post, donate today. Text BHM4577. So one and a half hours later, he goes from heartbroken to give me money if you want to be prosperous. You wonder why people don't pay attention to Christians and Christianity. This is what we have to offer. What really bothers us, whether we're Christians or whether we're not Christians, when bad things happen? That feeling that you get of rage, of anger, of why is your desire for justice. You witnessed an unjust, cruel, evil, wicked act, whether it be something as massive as that shooting or just something in your day-to-day -day life. When you are wronged or you see somebody wronged, you want justice. That's what we're asking for when we ask the question, why do bad things happen? Where is justice? Ask uh, the Furman father, or not Furman, the father of the man that O.J. allegedly murdered, that still, what was his name? Goldman. Goldman, right. Furman was the detective. Goldman. Ask the Goldman dad if he feels like his family's gotten justice. But that's what we want. We want justice. And this question is asked all the way back in Job, and when the questioner, the questioner is asking Job, it's Bildad the Shuhite. Everybody knows him. Bildad the Shuhite. <laughs> but he asks the question in Job 8.3, Doth God pervert judgment, or doth the Almighty pervert justice? Now he was asking it rhetorically with the answer, of course not. God Almighty is going to do right. But when we ask the question, Christian or non-Christian, we're asking, why do bad things happen if there's a God? Why does God let all this injustice and all this evil happen? Why? The problems even... I showed you the problems you get when you ask Christians, why do bad things happen? It's compounded by wrongly dividing the word. And I know a lot about that. I did it most of my life. Now, people have verses that they are told is God's promise to you. This is what God's doing today. They take you to verses like Jeremiah 23. Look over at that, please. Jeremiah 23, 5. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch, and a king shall reign and prosper and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. Isn't that what we're looking for? Justice. Let's have some judgment. Let's stop these bad things. Here's the problem, though, when you wrongly divide or wrongly combine the word of truth. Has anybody ever heard somebody when they pray, at the end of their prayer, they have like a throwaway line? right before, in Jesus' name, amen. They'll say, Lord, we pray for the furtherance of the kingdom. Anybody ever heard that? Pray for the furtherance of the kingdom. People are taught that you are living in God's kingdom today. And that God is ruling and reigning on earth today, and everything that happens is God's will. God made it happen. God orchestrated this. God did that. Did God do a bang-up job on justice in Las Vegas the other day? If that's true, 
Forget that. Where was God during World War II? Did he take a nap? Doctrine matters. That's why I fight it and kick it so hard. If you're in the kingdom today, I was taught as a little boy, you know, does anybody remember King Jesus from Sunday school? You're a king's kid, and Jesus is the king, and he's ruling the earth, and, and he's in charge of everything, so you just never have to worry about anything because God's going to take care of you. Said some of the people in Las Vegas right before a bullet passed through their head. Forget the one isolated incident. Read a newspaper. Just the front page. Where is the justice and judgment in the earth, God? It seems like every day I see nothing but bad things happening. Why? Good question. We've got no help from the Christians. Goodness, half the country's politicians... When I turned on the TV, half the country's politicians blame a political party for a guy shooting. I don't remember that in anybody's platform at the convention. I watched both conventions. I don't remember any party saying, we want to make it easier for people to murder their fellow man. So we have a desire for justice. And what troubles us is we're not hearing from God. Silence from God. We see an injustice like that happening. No lightning bolt. No angel coming down. Nothing. People we know get sick. They're in the hospital. Nothing. We hear nothing. Something, go, go to a children's hospital. You want to have a bad day? Go to the children's hospital. Look at that. Those poor parents of those kids in there. Where's God? Nothing. Silence. I have a book in my library. It's written over 100 years ago by Sir Robert Anderson. It's titled, The Silence of God. And he's asking these questions. And he puts it in a way that really makes you think. Because we're so small in our thinking. We think, what's happening in northeastern Ohio today? But you think about the entire planet. Seven plus billion people. How much sin and wickedness and evil in one day? One day on this planet. How many murders? How many rapes? How many children being beaten, tortured? How many people starving to death? How many people wrongfully imprisoned? One day. And he said, Anderson said, who can estimate the sorrow and suffering and wrong endured during a single round of the clock? Who can even estimate it? So much of it is done in secret anyway. What mind is competent to grasp the sum of all this great world's misery, heaped up day after day, year after year, century after century? How big of a pile of injustice, of bad things, wrong things, evil things happening? He goes on to speak about how we as humans, we see this injustice and we try our best to, to stop it. There's orphanages. There's programs to feed the hungry. There's people who try to stop wars and prevent wars. We as humans try to stop it or, or at least hold it back. And he says, but as for God, the light of the moon and stars is no more cold and pitiless than he appears to be. This is a Christian man writing this. Is there a God? 
Does he want justice or not? If he's there, why are all these bad things happening? What do atheists do with it? Atheists love to lash out at or in a rage against a God they doesn't believe exists. They don't believe exists. Isn't that odd? I'm so angry at nothing because nothing doesn't exist. Okay. I can't remember being angry at nothing ever, but all right. But they, they lash out in a rage because they say God is immoral for allowing this evil to take place, these bad things to happen. I, even if I believed he existed, I wouldn't want anything to do with him because he would be immoral. That's what they say. What do atheists do when they look at the likes of Pat Robertson and Benny Hinn? They laugh. I'll never serve a God that judges America because I don't follow Cheeto Jesus. Anybody ever hear that term before? That's what they call Trump. People that don't like him because you know, he looks kind of orange on TV. They call him Cheeto Jesus. But think about that. That's, that's what we heard from Pat Robertson. Why did this bad thing happen? You don't like Trump. All right. So our tract. You see there's a morass of confusion out there. Nobody seems to have an answer. What about the atheist response to the agnostic guy? I'll never serve a God that lets you live while he kills the mother of three. God didn't save her, but he saved you? Yeah, I don't want anything to do with that God. So our tract begins, we're going to get to it, yeah. Too many times, God is blamed for the bad things, and yet he is rarely thanked for the good things. Oh yeah, there's that. I know I've been a Debbie Downer the entire time I've been speaking so far today. There are some good things in this world, are there not? No matter what happens, there is a tendency to ignore God and his gracious provision. If you're having a hard time wrapping your head around that, how do you like that air you're breathing? Keeping you alive. Pretty nice. Where did that come from? God? How do you like gravity? Anybody happy they're not floating around up to the ceiling today? It's a pretty tall ceiling. Gravity's nice. Those are, those are things. But I know I'm taking it down to the most base element, but think about it. You, crops grow. You put a seed in the ground, in a few months you have food. Wow. Wow. How do you like all the beauty that you see on this? Even in this fallen and sin-cursed state, I know you're a gardener and all the beautiful flowers and just the beauty that is on this planet, even in its fallen state. That's nice. We ever thank God for that? Hey, God, thanks for food. I'd be dead without it. How about... We're told we can be grateful in all things. Does that mean we can be grateful in the Las Vegas shooting? How about the fact that man, even in his fallen, sinful, wicked, evil state that we all are, still has a conscience? Unless you've got to the point where you've seared your conscience with a hot iron. Mankind still has a conscience. Where did that come from? Why don't we just, wow, my child's being a real pain and he costs money. Kill him! Why don't you see that every single day? Laws, right? No, because men have a conscience. We have built in us, it's what cries out for justice. We know there's right. We know there's wrong. Romans 2.15 talks about that. He says, which show the work, he's talking about Gentiles there that did not have the law. He says, which show the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness, and their thoughts the meanwhile accusing or excusing one another. So they have a right and wrong. This is right, this is wrong. 
We have an awareness of good and evil. So instead, I'm sure you saw all the videos of the heroes and the people that tried to help out there. Bullets are raining down. You have people jumping and covering other people, using their own bodies as shields. You have people throwing wounded people into the backs of pickup trucks, getting them to the hospital. You know, all those stories. Because we have a conscience, because we have right and wrong, we have one shooter and we've got 22,000 helpers. If God did not put that conscience within us, wouldn't it be very easy to have 22,000 shooters and one helper? The track says, no matter what happens, there's a tendency to ignore God and his gracious provision. This tendency is called rebellion. All humans possess it. Rebellion is the root cause of death and suffering that you see around you. It is otherwise known as sin. That's the most cogent thing I've heard said today. Why do bad things happen? The root cause is rebellion. It's called sin. That makes a lot more sense than old Pat Robertson, doesn't it? I don't know if you ever thought about this before. You remember in Genesis 1 when God gets done creating everything on the planet and God saw everything that he had made, actually heaven and earth, he creates everything. He saw everything that he had made and behold, it was very good. That's Genesis 131. So God, a good and holy God, created a very good creation. You can turn one page in your Bible. One page in your Bible. And you have the leader of mankind on earth. And you have the top created being in heavenly places. Both in open rebellion against their creator. This page, it's all very good. Holy God, no problems, no sin, no rebellion. Flip one page over, King Adam of earth and Lucifer of heavenly places, the cherub that covered, both in open rebellion against their creator. Why do bad things happen? Instead of looking up at God, we should be looking in the mirror. We should be remembering what our Bible says, that this is a sin-cursed earth, and the God of this world is the devil. Does that sound like a great place to live? Why do bad things happen? Oh, there's seven billion rebels here. Um, they all are in opposition to God, and all the, you know, the leader of this place is Satan. He's in opposition and rebellion to God, too. Suddenly, my front page on my newspaper is starting to make sense, isn't it? Oh, that explains it. Why do bad things happen, God? Let's let the atheist answer that one. Why do bad things happen, God? Well, because I created beings that have a free will. If he's in rebellion, he had the ability to choose, did he not? So he's got a free will. So then you could tell the atheist, hey atheist, what's your fix for it? Would you take away the free will? Will we just make you a robot serving the God? The atheist would cry out, no, injustice, that's not fair. Well, what do you want? Do you want robots or do you want free will? It's a good question. You know what would happen if the atheist was told he was going to have his free will taken away so God could make all bad things stop? You know what he would say? Not fair! I rebel against that! The tract, so the tract tells us the root cause is rebellion, sin and death, and suffering. Well, that's all the bad things that happen, isn't it? Sin, death, and suffering. 
The cause of it is sin. The first man, Adam, rebelled and sinned against God, bringing a curse upon the world and death into the human race, which God had originally made to live forever. I know we kind of gloss over this when we read the account in Genesis of when Adam and Eve first knew they were naked and all we laugh in Sunday school. Isn't that cute? (laughs) They knew they were naked. They try to sew fig leaf aprons to cover themselves. And then God fixed it. God made him a coat of skins to wear. And you move on in the story. But hold on for a second. Death didn't happen until man sinned. So think about you're Adam and Eve. You're king and queen of the planet. You have dominion over all the animals. You've just rebelled against God. And God comes in and says, put this on. And you take it. Can you imagine the horror and shock when they realize it's the skin of an animal? If, if this is the skin, then the animal has no skin. The animal is dead. Death because of me. I rebelled against God and now I have to wear death. We don't think about it like that in Sunday school, do we? Death. Was it right? Did the animal deserve to die? No, it's dead because of me. I brought this into the planet. It's death by sin. Sin is awful. A couple of animals five dozen or so humans getting blown away. Sin, why do bad things happen? Sin, it is a natural consequence of rebellion. We teach this to our children. Why did Billy get in time out? Time out. You got to say that. You can't say why did Billy get a spanking anymore. It's a natural consequence of rebellion. You brought this bad thing. So that's Adam. Okay, well, you know, that's a long time ago. The track goes on. Since the essence of rebellion is in our nature, passed down from our father Adam, we continue in self-destructive, sinful behavior to this very day. We don't think of disobedience and rebellion as destructive behavior, do we? Especially not when we're teenagers. I didn't. This is not self-destructive. I'm progressive. I'm enlightened. Right? I'm shaking off the puritanical legalism of my forebears. I'm moving on. You're a sinful rebel. That's what you are. You're a sinful rebel. That's what Adam and Eve were doing. They were being enlightened, moving on. We will be as God and no good and evil by rebelling against the God who created us. Let's ask the great theologian, Dr. Phil. How's that working out for you, Adam and Eve? Your quest for enlightenment. But the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Does that sound like destructive behavior? Self-destructive? I'm going to take steps to make sure that me, who is designed to live forever, dies. That's rebellion. That's sin. That's the first time. The track goes on to bring us up to today. This behavior, this sin, this rebellion, multiplied billions of times over, creates waves of consequence that hurt sometimes innocent people. Think about that sentence for a second. That one sin, that death, that rebellion, times billions, trillions. Waves of consequence of sin and rebellion and wickedness bouncing off of each other from place to place all around this globe 
creates waves of consequences, and what's going to happen? Some innocent people are going to get shot. Some innocent people are going to get hurt. You see these drug wars where they have these gangs fighting over their drug turf, and they all shoot at each other. What happens? Every time, bullets go through somebody's little bedroom window, and some four-year-old gets shot. Waves of consequence of billions and billions of sinful acts. The next sentence is so key. God neither makes these decisions nor delivers the consequences. What you are watching is the result of thousands of years and trillions of sinners, trillions of sins done by billions of sinners bouncing off of each other. And if you're there thinking that God's sitting up there in heaven, guiding the bullets, saying, kill that one, that one lives, dead, lives, dead, lives, dead, you don't understand what God is doing today. You don't understand the grace and the position that God has put himself in to offer grace today. Galatians 6, 7 it says, God neither makes those decisions nor delivers the consequences. Individuals make those bad decisions and also reap the consequences. Now we're back to free will. You have a free will to make bad decisions and you will not escape the consequences. Be not deceived, God is not mocked, for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Why do I weigh 700 pounds and can't get out of a chair? You've been spending $100 at McDonald's every day for 20 years. God made me fat. No. McDonald's made you fat. The track says, Some religionists would have you believe that bad events are God's judgment and good circumstances are God's blessing. Hey, that's what I heard for 20 years of my life. Good, it's God. Bad, it's either God's judgment or... Depends on how holy you are. Now, if you're somebody that's really holy in the church and bad stuff's happening, well, that's the devil attacking you. Now, but if somebody that could be blamed, well, that's just God judging you. Benny Hinn, Jerry Falwell, Pat Robertson, whatever fool Christianity trots out, will say that. Good circumstances are God's blessing. Bad circumstances are God's judgment. Why, you're not respecting Trump. And you think you're going to escape the wrath of God? This is when somebody cries out and says, isn't it in there somewhere? Isn't there some verse in the Bible somewhere that says, if you do good, good things are going to happen to you, and if you do bad, bad things are going to happen to you. Isn't it in there somewhere? Yeah, it's in there somewhere. Deuteronomy 28. Remember those verses? Blessed in the storehouse, blessed in the field, blessed in the city. What's it talking about? Well, every verse in the Bible is about me, so obviously me, right? No. Deuteronomy 28 is speaking to Israel, Old Testament Israel under the law. That's not you. Old Testament Israel under the law. Is that the church, the body of Christ, which is not under the law, but under grace? Not Israel. Israel. Body of Christ. Old Testament Israel. Not under the law. Under the law. Those two things the same? Well, maybe in this church they're not the same, but you just got to get a better pastor who can fix that, and put it in the blender, right? Some religionists would have you believe that bad events are God's judgment and the good circumstances are God's blessings. Your common sense proved that this is not true in light of the many injustices that remain. Well, common sense isn't all that common anymore. So let's put it in a way we can understand. Good circumstances, God's blessing. Bad circumstances, God's cursing. Kim Jong-un 
is wealthy beyond your wildest imagination and has more power at the tip of his fingers than you could ever dream of. Is that justice? Is that righteous and holy? If you don't worship the dear leader properly, he kills you. So, yeah, you know that that won't work. You know that you're living in a world where there's injustice and God's not rewarding everything that's good with good circumstances and everything that's bad with judgment. That's not happening. He says the scripture proves that false as well. He gives uh, Romans 5.3. You can look at that real quick. <laughs> we glory in tribulations. Why would you glory in a tribulation if good circumstances meant God was happy with you? Another one says 2 Timothy 3.12, a promise I've never seen on Benny Hinn's program. All that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Do a good job, you'll be persecuted. That's God's promise. Back to why bad things happen. It says, for despite our low estate and rebellion, that's a pretty, you could call that a low estate, could you not? Billions of people committing billions of horrific sinful acts every single day as the world turns. Or if you're a flat earther as the sun spins. Despite our low estate and rebellion, God has withheld his judgment and continues to provide a way of salvation and deliverance by his grace. Why, God, are you silent? Why are you not stopping this? That's the answer. He's withholding his judgment. Do you know what the next thing on the prophetic timeline is? Wrath. Judgment. Why, God, are you letting this happen? I'm withholding my wrath, showing grace. He continues to provide a way of salvation and deliverance by his grace. Listen what he did while we were his enemies. But God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. God is withholding today his wrath from the planet in the most awesome demonstration of mercy and long-suffering that I could ever think of, more than I'd ever think of. Think about it. We have God intervene, God intervene. God, show yourself, show yourself. He shows up in a human body, becomes one of us. I shouldn't say it like that. He's fully God. He's fully man. God put himself in the body. The fullness of the Godhead bodily is what the Bible calls us. But we say, I would just listen to God if he talked to me. He comes down and literally lives with you. Can you get any more personal and intimate than that? We're going to have dinner together. We're going to walk together from place to place. I'm going to talk to you face to face. And what is humanity's answer? Kill him! The most unfair, you're looking, why do bad things happen? Where's the justice? Why does all this unfair stuff happen? The most unfair event in human history. We killed the Holy One and the just. He who knew no sin, perfect in every single way, never committed any kind of sin, never an injustice, never a wrong, kill him. That's what we did. And what's God's response? Well, I've had enough now. Mercy. Peace. Isn't that what every single one of Paul's books start with? Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Why do bad things happen, God? Well, because he's offering grace and mercy and peace. One last time to any and all who will believe and accept it. Now is the day of salvation, though. That's what you could have told 58 people earlier in the day, that day in Las Vegas. Now is the day for salvation. Why? Because you're not going to live to tomorrow. 
Now's the day. This is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. Why are you allowing these bad things to continue to happen, God? Because I want men to be saved. I want people to have a chance to be saved. That's why I'm withholding my righteous indignation. Does that make Revelation make a little bit more sense to you? When you read those passages about God pours out the bowl of his wrath on the planet, when you think about every single day, how many awful, wicked things happen. To redeem us from our wretched condition, God's blood was shed for humanity as humanity in Jesus Christ. It is now for the sake of Christ that sinful humanity can receive what it does not deserve, the riches of God's grace and eternal life. Ain't that the truth? Look what we've wrought on ourselves. Why do these bad things happen? We do not deserve grace and mercy and peace. It says, while the world broils around us in a mire of wrong decisions. Think of a frothing pot, boiling fluid. The world broils around us in a mire of wrong decisions. God's grace abounds even more to forgive us of sins and offer us perfect righteousness if we would only trust the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what God's doing. That's why God is silent and allowing it to continue. And I should say this. God's not silent. He speaks every single day through his word. He speaks every single day through his Holy Spirit resident in every one of us that believes. And he speaks and he moves and he operates in this world every single day through every single member of the church, the body of Christ. So it's not like God's absent. But what, what the question we're dealing with is why isn't God stopping the madness? That's the answer. He wants men to be saved. Let me repeat from early in the trek. This behavior multiplied billions of times over creates waves of consequence that hurt sometimes innocent people. God neither makes those decisions nor delivers the consequences. Individuals make those bad decisions and also reap the consequence. To which someone would cry out to me, Nay! God controls every single thing that happens. God, I don't believe in a God that allows chance. I've heard that one. God doesn't believe in chance. Those are comfortable lies we tell ourselves. What does the God of the Bible actually say? Anybody remember Jesus talking about the uh, Good Samaritan? What does he say? He says, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, who stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. The next thing Jesus says is, and by chance, there came down a certain priest that way. Chance. Jesus believes in chance. Now think about that sentence about the waves of consequence of multiplied billions of decisions. Let's look at all the choices that were made. A man decided to go from Jerusalem to Jericho. That's a choice. He fell among thieves. Well, he didn't choose that, but those guys chose to become thieves, did they not? Stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. By chance, there came down a certain priest that way. Well, he decided to become a priest at some point. And he decided he was going to go down that road, didn't he? So what do you have? You have a confluence of previously made choices one guy gets beat up and half dead, and another guy comes walking by. There is chance. It is what you call the residue of previously made choices. Billions and billions of previously made choices. I am an American living in northeastern Ohio today because of billions and billions of previously made choices. It's that simple. 
Bad things happen as a result of man's rebellion in Adam. Good things happen as a result of God's grace in Christ Jesus. That's love. To look down on this mess and say, I'm not imputing their trespasses. I'm offering grace, mercy, and peace to all. Without exception. My will is that you all be saved. That's a good thing. Why do bad things happen? Because God's still allowing good things to happen. There's another answer. He's still allowing his grace and mercy and peace to be available. You wouldn't do that if you were God. God. 